Attorney Oscar Salgado's trial draws to an end. So will the DPP get a first ever criminal conviction against an attorney? We'll have her assessment. Jared Rangai, he killed his mother, sister and stepfather, but he asks the court for a sentencing indication. He might plead guilty, but say he was sleepwalking when he did it. Plus one 19-year-old dead and another being sought in Orange Walk tonight in a murder between friends. Also, can you say Uber, please? We'll tell you about the City Hall and the Medriver app and how City Hall is making it more energy efficient. We've got details of these and all the stories in our newscast for tonight, Tuesday, February 13th, 2024. Good evening with your news. I'm in your crime. Please, you're watching the Nation Station, Channel 7. Babe, I'm going out to pay the water bill. You don't need to go out. You could pay it from your phone. Look. Babe, the credit card bill. I'll go pay it. You can also pay it with your phone. Babe? Yes, love? I need to go deposit the baby series, babe. You really want to go out, don't you? It's okay. I will make the transfer and you go play ball. With Atlantic Bank Mobile, your personal banking experience is easier and more convenient. Bank your way with any of our digital channels and save time for what matters most. Atlantic Bank, building the future together. In its Plan Belize agenda, the PUP committed to provide opportunities for deserving Belizeans to own a home. Within a year, the PUP through the MIDH delivered its first starter homes. To date, hundreds of homes have been handed out all across the country. One housing community is complete and others are being constructed, including a community for public officers in Dalmapan. The government has also financed the National Bank of Belize and the DFC, so Belizeans can access mortgages and build their homes. We are committed to our people, and we continue the work of building Belize. In March, let us continue to move forward. Stay on track with the PUP. In the heart of Orange Walk, a team stands ready to bring fresh energy and innovative ideas to our beloved town. Meet Enrique Wico Carbayo, your UDP mayoral candidate. Joining him are six dynamic councillor candidates, each with a passion for progress. Carlos Charito Diaz, Kendall Esquivel, Marina Gongora, Adelaida Adi Tuyo, Vanessa Urbina, and Yara Vera. This is your UDP team for Orange Walk, united in vision and purpose, and ready to make Orange Walk shine brighter than ever. Your choice is your voice. Vote UDP 7 on March 6. Minister Henry Charles Busher. The National Assembly Handbook says that as a member of the House of Representatives, you should not be collecting any other salary. You were paid a ministerial salary of $80,000 of taxpayer money to work exclusively for us, but you're not satisfied with that. In breach of the National Assembly Handbook, you continue to work at the Holy Redeemer Credit Union. You are a disgrace as minister in charge of good governance. While Belizeans are struggling to survive, you will live large 
The PUP is not for the people. On March the 6th, we will reject the PUP. access to computers, the internet, and various digital technologies. This center will serve as a catalyst for empowerment and education. With this joint endeavor, we were able to inaugurate five Digital Connect centers in different communities across the country last year. And this year, we are planning to add four more. It's really an opportunity for us to come together as a community yet again and share knowledge, share experiences, share training, and of course, as this month is all about, share love. Rural and urban communities alike are being bridged to ensure that every citizen is provided with essential services and resources needed to thrive in today's digital age. Make we no lie, cost of living, that was a real problem. But if you believe this is a fool, fool one, where they say if you vote for UDP in a match, cost of everything going down overnight, something have been wrong with you. The fact is, that was a lot of countries they struggle, even big countries like the US. Things not back to normal worldwide, with COVID and with the war in Russia. But that the why this government subsidized the bakers and the productive sectors and the transportation sectors and the tourism operators. That the why would it push free education and free primary health care. What small country like Belize could have never escaped inflation. But that the why this government to push for people get land title and get house and opportunities for work. We will beat this cause PUP got our vision and our plan. In March, no not go ahead like this one. Stay up on track with the PUP. When Brisenio and the PUP want to borrow more millions of the box of taxpayers, they pass loan motions in one single day. We have this motion taken through all its stages this day. But when it comes to compensating hardworking Belizeans for their dedicated service, it takes forever. As with the teachers, many of whom have been working for months without pay. You all haven't been paid for how long? September to now. That's unbelievable. Who can go four months without being paid? I don't know, sir. I think it's now time for the Minister and the Ministry of Education to address this matter. All of us are getting hurt because we need to pay our bills. We are frustrated and now we're getting out of class, we're sitting out. Meanwhile, BDF soldiers who served their country dutifully for a lifetime still cannot collect their benefits after retiring more than a year ago. We served the country 22 years and this is the treatment what the government will give us, I don't think this is acceptable. It was one of their own party supporters who told us the truth about the priorities of PUP leaders running our country. Because the people are not always about the people, always about themselves. Vote them out. In April 2016, this man, Minister Abelardo Mai, recklessly killed this lady, Julia Arana, as she was saying goodbye to her son and her husband. Instead of doing the decent thing and compensating the family, Abelardo Mai smeared the dead lady's name, saying she was under the influence of alcohol and ran into his truck. But the court did not find Minister Mai to be a credible witness. It rejected his story and ordered him to pay over $200,000 to the family of Mrs. Arana. Minister Mai is cold, callous, and dishonorable. On March 6th, reject the PUP. Belize Electricity Limited cares about your safety and reminds you to always look out for power lines. When constructing your home or business, ensure that your structure is not immediately under or too close to power lines. Be cautious when mounting equipment such as green gutters or satellite dishes 
and make sure to secure them properly to avoid them falling or making contact with nearby overhead power lines. Also avoid planting trees directly under or too close to power lines. If you touch any conducting object that's in contact with a power line, electricity can instantly pass through you, causing a potentially deadly shock. If you're uncertain or think your home or business may be too close to power lines, call us toll free at 0800-235-2273 or message us on Facebook or WhatsApp for guidance when working near power lines. Belize Electricity Limited, we care about your safety. Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. The trial of attorney Oscar Salgado for Abetman to commit murder is over, and on March 8th, he will know his fate. For the past four months, we've been closely following the trial. Salgado is accused of hiring another man, Giovanni Ramirez, to kill a woman, Marilyn Barnes. She had lodged a complaint against him to the General Legal Commission. And today in court, both the DPP and Salgado's attorney gave their final submissions. Since Salgado previously testified that he had never met Ramirez, the DPP stated that Ramirez would have had to gather intimate knowledge of someone he never met, considering that his statement discusses the complaint at the General Legal Council, as well as Salgado's vehicle and home. Salgado's attorney, Adolf Lucas, has argued that the trial was unfair due to the secondary testimonies of the two main witnesses. Throughout the trial, Lucas has also emphasized the lack of visual evidence to prove that the voice on the alleged recording was indeed Salgado's. After today's session, the media spoke with the DPP. I don't think there were any surprises from the other side in terms of what we expected them to come to say. He said you've not explained at all what happened to the DPP's CDs. That was also dealt with at the case management stage. The copy of the CD also went missing from the office of the DPP. Do you feel that it's a strong case the Crown has? We wouldn't have been prosecuting him if we didn't think that there was a likelihood that he would be convicted. Because uh, the defense is saying, telling the judge today that he should not pay any attention to the secondary evidence of Wilfredo Ferrofino and the Commissioner of Police having listened to the audio, and then they hear say evidence of um, Giovanni Ramirez. What did you expect the defense to say? <laughs> did you expect the defense to say to listen to it and pay attention to it and rely on it? What does it mean that he's also telling the judge, and I think the judge also said himself, that he must approach Giovanni Ramirez's statement with a lot of caution? Could that hurt your case? Those are, those are the words that need to be used. Those are ordinary words used in directions to judges, to juries, when considering evidence. Giovanni Ramirez did not actually come to testify. He didn't go into the box and give his testimony, and he wasn't cross-examined. So, of course, the judge is being asked to rely on a written statement that has not been tested by cross-examination. So the judge has to approach it with caution. That does not mean that he cannot rely on it. And in this case, as you would have seen from following it, there are so many aspects of that statement that have been independently confirmed. So our argument was that, of course, the judge can reach the position that he can safely rely on this statement. We'll let you know what happens on March 8th. And the trial against accused murderer Jared Rangai will also continue on March 8th. He has applied to the High Court for a second sentencing indication if he were to plead guilty to all three murders. The matter was back in court today, but the DPP said that the judge did not give the indication today. They have asked for a sentence indication. We are to send the agreed facts to the court tomorrow, and then the judge will give his indication on the adjourned date. Mom, this matter has been before the court for some years. Is it a concern that the defense might say um, justice delayed? 
the defense has been the reason for the delay in the matter. They will not be able to allege that now. Right, guys, case will be heard in the morning while Soldados will be in the afternoon. If it goes to trial, his defense is expected to be that he was sleepwalking when he killed his mother, his stepfather, and his sister. Following the harrowing discovery of 19-year-old Josh Koo's body yesterday, police have now diverted their efforts towards finding a second suspect. Today, they issued a wanted notice for 19-year-old Stephen Diaz. So far, police investigations show that early on Sunday morning, Ku, along with three others and Diaz, had departed the nightclub in a Toyota Matrix driven by 19-year-old Jared Mansour. Shortly thereafter, while passing the BSI factory, a physical altercation occurred between Ku, Diaz and Mansour, which ended in Ku being knocked unconscious. Police believe that the other men then took Ku to mile 38 on the Philip Golson Highway, where they dragged him out of the vehicle to a grassy area 170 meters off the road, where they stabbed and beat him to death and left his body there. Police managed to uncover a cell phone and wallet at the scene. Police urged the public to contact them if anyone has any information on DS's whereabouts. We'll take a break now when we come back. Can you say Uber, Belize? Well, we'll tell you how City Hall is hoping to revolutionize the mid-driver app with X-Taxis. Don't go away. and get a chance to win a $10,000 homecation with Benny's quality and savings. Minister Henry Charles Busher. The National Assembly Handbook says that as a member of the House of Representatives, you should not be collecting any other salary. You were paid a ministerial salary of $80,000 of taxpayer money to work exclusively for us, but you're not satisfied with that. In breach of the National Assembly Handbook, you continue to work at the Holy Redeemer Credit Union. You are a disgrace as minister in charge of good governance. While Belizeans are struggling to survive, you will live large. The PUP is not for the people. On March the 6th, we will reject the PUP. In April 2016, this man, Minister Abelardo Mai, recklessly killed this lady, Julia Arana, as she was saying goodbye to her son and her husband. Instead of doing the decent thing and compensating the family, Abelardo Mai smeared the dead lady's name, saying she was under the influence of alcohol and ran into his truck. But the court did not find Minister Mai to be a credible witness. It rejected his story and ordered him to pay over $200,000 to the family of Mrs. Arana. Minister Mai is cold, callous, and dishonorable. On March 6th, reject the PUP. Our cherished Punta Gorda town stands at the dawn of renewal. It's time for Mekwit Tech Mac PG for we with a team dedicated to our town's prosperity. Meet the team leading this charge. Franklin Crancapolonia for mayor, joined by Kathy Burns, Carl 86 Cabral, Kevin Chuck, Seleni Koss, Victor Jacobs, and Jaren Lambe. This is our team, ready to take back Punta Gorda for our people. Together, we can ensure a prosperous, United and vibrant Punta Gorda. Join us and make with Techback PG for We. Vote UDP 7 on March 6.
Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. Owner remember when Brad's used to run Bonito? Only he and his silent partner get rich. But things way different now. Bolido that for we know, thanks to the government. And I could tell you this, in a two months, more money don't make than Brad's made a report in our whole year. And you may know that in a just two months, from December to February, more money pay out to we in our winnings than Brad's made a pay out in our whole year. And the best part is that profits from Bolido come right back to we through national health insurance. You notice know NHI done that orange walk and the roll up to the whole Belize district, including San Pedro and Kikata? That the way you call a win win for we. That only happened under this PUP government. So when March Corong, we the stay on track with the PUP. Express is a service that allows you to perform financial transactions conveniently at your neighborhood stores countrywide. Enjoy the convenience of cash withdrawals, bill payments, credit card payments, top up, or transfer between your accounts. All you need is your Atlantic Bank Visa debit card along with an ID. Non Atlantic Bank customers can also enjoy this service by paying with cash. Atla Express is easy convenient, secure, and near you. It is really important that these, that we continue to support the vendors of the Mahogany Street Hub. It is bigger than what I had. He's definitely in a better condition. People who knows my business before, it was a little bit more a knock stuff kind of thing. So we definitely appreciate having our established a proper building that we could secure at night time. That's sort of, that has, you know, that is priceless, that value there. Me siento muy agradecida. Desde el momento que pasamos aquí, pues vendemos un poquito más. Y la gente dice, está bien el lugar, está bonito, se mira más asedito, más arreglado. Pues estamos muy contentos. Creo que todo lo que estamos acá, we are going to be the envy of the country because there's going to be a beehive of economic activity for small business owners right here in the heart of the south side of Belize City. This project is just a microcosm of what we want to do across the country. We have a vision where we want to take the tourism industry. My Social Security, your direct online access to all your social security information, 360 view of all your social security information, registration services, benefits, contributions, and employer services at your fingertips. Enjoy all the new features with your My Social Security account. Register with SSB. Submission of benefit claims. Submission of contribution statements. View contribution record. Enjoy all your My Social Security feature at ssbportal.org.bz. Social Security at your fingertips. Please, you're watching the Nation Station, Channel 7. may not have made its way to Belize yet, but another similar app, Midriva, could be taken off with a push or maybe more like a power surge from the Belize City Council. Pretty soon residents will be able to use the app and to get access to faster and more energy efficient forms of transportation around the city. Joe Marie Lanza found out more today. This morning, the Belize City Council held a quick showcase of some of the heavy-duty equipment they have managed to acquire in office. In addition to this, the mayor also gave a first-hand look at its newest addition, two new vehicles set to be a part of the council's e-taxi pilot project. This first event is just to show a display of 
some of the heavy duty equipment we have been able to um, acquire since taking office in, in, in actually 2018. Right when we came to the office in 2018, we, we had essentially one, one pickup truck. Um, we have since been able to increase that to 12 pickup trucks. Um, at one point in time, they told us that all oh, the type of pickup trucks that you are getting um, will not last five years, and now it's six years. Um, but this council has always been about perseverance, about resilience. Um, we were supposed to, remember, we were supposed to um, go in after six months. It's now six years. So um, we, we just continue to show that we are resilient and we are here to really um, serve the people. But serving the people is important that you have to have the, the capabilities um, in terms of the heavy duty equipment, um, the pickup trucks for your special constables to be deployed, your traffic officers to be um, deployed. So um, we wanted to continue to add to the fleet. And, and as you could see here, we have back, back holes. We have graders and, and we want to continue to build along that line. Um, as you see on the other end, we are even venturing into building the ecosystem, right, of e-mobility in Belize City. We want to be the pioneers in e-mobility in the city. And if the city is making that charge and driving this initiative, it's only, um, it's very important that we, we play the leading role in leading e-mobility within Belize City. It's a collaborative effort between the Belize City Council and the Midriver app. The goal is to provide a service similar to Uber in Belize with the help of the Downtown Battlefield Park Taxi Association, who will be the first to utilize these vehicles on a lease-to-own agreement. We are not driving any of the taxi owners. Actually, the taxi owners um, association all across the city will really benefit from this initiative because our agreement is a lease to least to own eventually. Um, certainly we look at how we depreciate the vehicle. Um, we, we want to ensure that we have the financial model to ensure that we are able to meet the, the, the investment that the loan that we get, got for the for the um, for the e-taxes. We want to ensure that we have a maintenance component in it. We also want to ensure that we are able to pay um, the, the, the drivers out of that. And, and also the city has to get back its a little return on investment, obviously. And at the end of the term, we are able to say to the boat, to the um, taxi driver, here is this taxi, it's now yours. Um, the taxis are, will be run on the type of system that you have in the United States, similar to Uber, but it's um, locally built, a um, mid-driver app, which will be used to really um, track how these vehicles are running all over the city. The uh, people who want to access these taxis will be able to go on their phone up, get the mid-driver up, um, tell the driver, pick me up at this spot. It comes, pick you up, drop you off to where you go. It will also play um, a big role. And we were talking to the Minister of Tourism, who, who is very excited about this, this venture. Um, because many times we have the tourists, the overnight tourists, who come to Belize City. And many times they have nowhere to go. They would want to go on the on the entertainment strip, but the hotel is built more and they are a bit wary about moving and, and not knowing how they will get back. Having the app on their phones, similar to what is um, there in the United States, the Uber. Uh, we are excited about this um, um, e-taxis, e which is a complement to the to the e-buses. Um, and it's starting the ecosystem of e-mobility, of really transforming the, the, the local public transportation in the city. With up to $56,000 invested so far, the mayor says that they have yet to work out the financial logistics of the module before they can begin to fully operate through the app. But for now, he has high hopes that within the next three years, they will be able to expand onto other taxi associations in Belize? I don't think it is over, child. We never want to be in a situation where we are we are outpricing or underpricing the existing um, um, taxi drivers. You want to you want to have parity in terms of pricing and you don't want to undersell the product. You don't want to undersell the existing drivers. So you have to be very careful um, given the fact that that um, it's people. Uh, at the end of the day, it's about people and it's about everyone being 
able to earn wages in the city, um, be able to get a return on investment in the city. But it's never about driving anyone out of business. It's always about inclusion. Joe Marilanda, 7 News. Now that these brand new e-taxis may soon be in service, so will this new garbage truck that was donated today by the Japanese government. Mayor Wagner says that the donation will enable them to improve the efficiency of their nighttime garbage collection operations. We actually started this project in, in the COVID. Uh, when we were using masks, we had the first discussion and um, we wrote the we wrote the um, concept paper to the to the to the Japanese um, grassroots um, board, uh, and they they approved it for two new compactors, which will really enhance again our ability to 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 look at the hotspots. Um, we do have an existing um, contractual obligations with with uh, with, with BWC. Um, but we still have our obligations as well to the city um, in ensuring that those hotspots are addressed and in a timely fashion. We have our night team. Uh, these will not be used for commercial or residential garbage. It's just to enhance our night team support system. And with this flurry of donations, openings, and speeches that the mayor has been busy with these past few weeks, we asked him if his packed media calendar is just naked electioneering under the veneer of public officer. On the contrary, he claims that these projects have taken a while to coalesce. And finally, it's all starting to fall into place fortuitously with perfect timing. Well, you know... If you look at the concept papers, these were written, the e-buses were written in 2017, no, 2018, 2018 when we came in. This program started under COVID, right? We have been talking so long. The whole long of the talk about bus, the whole long of the talk about e-taxes, and not just this year when election. But they're happening now. But the project, the project takes a long while. You could, you know how these projects are. Um, the, the, the buses, for instance, is a EU funded grant fund, right? Over, over close to 3.8 million euros. That's a big project. And so it, it, it took a while. I was getting, even me, got frustrated sometimes, but um, it is here. It's not electioneering. It's just that everything is aligning. It's aligning for a big victory. We're now coming up on two years since the Belize City Council first introduced its parking meter project. And after a few complaints and hiccups regarding the meters out at Digi Park, not much has been said regarding the ones on Albert Street. Today, the mayor spoke with us about the feedback he's gotten on the meters in downtown Belize City which he says have been doing exactly what they were meant to do. I tend to differ with you on, on that matter. Um, parking meters are here to stay. It's a part of the ecosystem of a smart city. You travel anywhere in the world, municipalities control on-street parking. We can't control off-street parking, but the city has a responsibility to ensure that the spaces that is on street is regulated and that me and you and my brother here have equal opportunity to use that space. The, shop, the people who were parking there were not going into those stores to shop. They were people who were working in the downtown area and parked there all day. So even if I don't have parking meters, people will still not be able to access based on your um, uh, on what you are implying. Parking meters was placed there not to, to earn any substantive funds or anything. It was to regulate the space. And that, it, that is working. If you, walk, if you go to Brody's, I, want, I challenge you to Brody's, any one of those areas that have businesses in that area, they would say that people drive right up. I met a lady during Christmas and she said, I've never been in the downtown area, but now I'm able to go there and drive right up, pay me dollar, go in the shop, come out back. 
this is the type of um, leadership you want in a city where say, listen, every space in this area here is, is accessible by all the residents. And let me tell you something, we have 735 streets in the city. Only Albert Street and, and um, the Marine Parade have parking meters. So I don't see how you will say that parking should be. The parking is free all across the city. It's free. And while parking meters may be a primitive start, Mayor Wagner has his heart set on the creation, or at least the notion, of a smart city. He says the parking meters create room for the possibility of more stores and restaurants and even a shopping mall for the city. He says it's a must in order to appeal and keep up with the younger generation. The Generation Zs have different shopping habits. Um, they are not like the Generation X and Baby Boomers who walk to a store. No, they are going online and they are shopping. So shopping habits has a big, big, big um, contribute to how you as a... Maybe it's time for Belize City to, to, to have a, a, a mall because the, the young generation, not only their experience about shopping is different, they want to go in a shopping area where they can have a food court, they can have um, entertainment, they probably um, could watch a movie. Uh, their shopping habits are different, and so we have to evolve, con continuously evolve with the new generation, the Generation Zs and the Millennials. And we take a break now. When we come back, we'll tell you about a murderer deemed insane and on fit to stand trial. Plus, Coast Guard officer Kieran Sib, her psychiatric nurse, says she was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder when she fired an M4 carbine at a fellow Coast Guard officer's head. Also, Joseph Budna says police wrongfully detained him for cyber bullying. Don't go away. Es un servicio que te permite realizar transacciones financieras cómodamente en comercios cerca de ti. Con Atla Express puedes retirar efectivo, realizar pagos de facturas y tarjeta de crédito, comprar recargas y transferir entre tus cuentas. Solo necesitas una identificación válida y tu tarjeta de débito Visa de Atlantic Bank. Si no eres cliente de Atlantic Bank, Siempre puedes disfrutar de este servicio pagando en efectivo. Atla Express es fácil, conveniente, seguro y está cerca de ti. When it comes down to the wire and it's time to cast your vote, all the talking won't mean a thing. All the posturing and profiling and propaganda, nothing. All that matters in that moment is how well you have served your people the work you have done, the lives you have impacted, how you've spent taxpayer dollars and the opportunities you have given to the people. Your attention to education and health, to poverty alleviation, to employment and infrastructure, how well you manage challenges to keep moving forward. And in that moment, you go to cast your votes. The difference is absolutely clear. This party has delivered and continues to deliver. In March, stay on track with the PUP. In Gangriga, the heartbeat of our culture and community calls for a new direction. Meet Hubert A. Lucas, our mayoral candidate, a leader whose roots run deep in Gangriga's soil. Joining Hubert, our six dedicated councillor candidates, united in their commitment to Dangriga. Frank Calis, Adeline Estero, Sidney Fajardo, Anthony Garbot, Stephen Laurie, and Dwayne Sampson. This team stands ready to tackle our most pressing challenges with innovative solutions. Vote the choice for great change. Vote UDP7 on March 6.
Minister Henry Charles Busher. The National Assembly Handbook says that as a member of the House of Representatives, you should not be collecting any other salary. You were paid a ministerial salary of $80,000 of taxpayer money to work exclusively for us, but you're not satisfied with that. In breach of the National Assembly Handbook, you continue to work at the Holy Redeemer Credit Union. You are a disgrace as minister in charge of good governance. While Belizeans are struggling to survive, you will live large. The PUP is not for the people. On March the 6th, we will reject the PUP. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. In April 2016, this man, Minister Abelardo Mai, recklessly killed this lady, Julia Arana, as she was saying goodbye to her son and her husband. Instead of doing the decent thing and compensating the family, Abelardo Mai smeared the dead lady's name, saying she was under the influence of alcohol and ran into his truck. But the court did not find Minister Mai to be a credible witness. It rejected his story and ordered him to pay over $200,000 to the family of Mrs. Arana. Minister Mai is cold, callous, and dishonorable. On March 6th, reject the PUP. It is undeniable that Belize City thrives under UDP. And once again, Belize City is ready for leadership that works. A leadership that not only promises, but delivers. Our mayoral candidate, Nelma Mortis-Jones, is a beacon of hope and action. She is joined by a diverse and hard-working team. Horace Alford, Brian Audinet, Alicia Craig, Leon Gill, Samson Jacobs, Tyrone Loriano, Victor Miguel, Angeli Perez, Jason Stain, and Tatiana Young. With Nelma Jones Mortis and her team, Belize City will witness a new dawn of leadership that works and delivers. On March 6, vote UDP 11. Owner, remember that COVID made the wrong? Just a couple years back, nobody mega jabs. Everything me locked down, borders shut down, people made it dead every day. Look how we leave Belize now. I know some of us don't even remember COVID because all the work now. We get opportunities for own land and for own with house. With kids that are school and we find out that free education is a real thing. We got NHI, which means that we could get with checkup, with x-ray, and all our blood tests our medicine for our least small change. And even better than that, this government removed all fees from public clinics, so everything free. All of this happened in a three years. All of this happened because PUP had one plan. Only crab walk back way, and we certainly done a crab. In a match, we the safe pan track with the PUP.
Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. In an emergency, people may try to take advantage of a person at risk, including children and women. Avoid this from happening to your family members by practicing the following. Be aware of strangers offering to take your children away and promising to help you or your family. These offers are not always genuine and a child could be at risk of violence, exploitation or abuse. Make every effort to let your children know that they can tell you if something happens to them and it doesn't matter who the person is, that you will listen and report it. Talk to your children and let them know that they should ask for help immediately if someone tries to touch them in an inappropriate way or make them feel uncomfortable. Report any negative behavior or conduct by anyone. By following these tips, you can ensure the safety of your family. Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. He killed a man, but Justice Candice Nanton said that Shadrach White is insane and not fit to stand trial for murder. Nanton ordered he be kept in a fit place at Kobe Foundation and be further treated for his mental illness. She also ordered that periodic reviews be done on him every six months and that the court registrar be notified of all outcomes should he ever be found fit to stand trial. On July 29th of 2020, White killed William Rubio in Belize City. Nanta noted that while there is no institution for the insane, that he be detained in a safe place at the Kobe Foundation while he is treated for schizophrenia. Justice Nanton heard from the Ministry of Health and Wellness psychiatrist, Dr. Alejandro Matos, who has treated White from 2022 to the present, as well as White himself, who spoke to the court during the hearing. Dr. Matos said it is highly likely that White could ever be fit for trial and that he has to be on permanent treatment for the rest of his life. Without that, Dr. Matos said he would be a danger to society. Also in the High Court today was Kieran Zip, the Coast Guard officer accused of trying to kill a male Coast Guard officer in 2015. Zip allegedly took an M4 carbine rifle and fired it in Hyde's direction, hitting him once in the head. Zip today gave a doc statement in her defense where she said the gun fired accidentally due to the rolling waves. The two witnesses called on her behalf were both mental health experts, the first a psychiatric nurse, Ingrid Bennett, and the second clinical psychologist, Crystal Humes. Nurse Bennett Clark said she treated Zib between 2011 to 2019 and that, in 2011, Zib had anxiety and depression disorder and that she was receiving treatment. Dr. Bennett further added that Zib's issues were related to allegations of a rape and that she had a consultation with her and did a report on April 14th of 2015 where she found Zib had post-traumatic stress disorder. The defense then called Humes who told the court that she did a test on October 23rd, 2023 on Zib where she identified post-traumatic stress disorder as the most pronounced presentation. On November 9, 2023, Zib was diagnosed as suffering from severe PTSD and experiencing symptoms. The prosecution's case, supported by statements from other officers who witnessed the incident, is that Zib was in a state of readiness, stood up, took aim, and fired a shot. The case is now coming to a close with both prosecution and defense having presented their cases. A man will be spending nine years behind bars after being convicted of stabbing his stepfather. The incident occurred back in July 2016 and 27-year-old Michael Baptist, a.k.a. Chucky, was charged with dangerous harm. In November, he was found guilty by a jury. Justice Nigel Pilgrim explained that he took several factors into consideration before sentencing Baptist, including the victim impact statement, Baptist's theft charge, and the fact that his stepfather is now considered handicapped. 
The nine years began on November 22, 2023. According to the victim's testimony, he was at his Los Lagos home when Baptist came by. He asked if he could spend the night, and while the victim was sleeping, he stabbed him 27 times. Last Friday, you heard the Commissioner of Police talking about self-styled freelance journalist Joseph Budna and an apparent complaint of cyberbullying against him. He is accused of cyberbullying an Orange Walk PUP politician. But today we learned that he was arrested and charged for cyberbullying another individual. He was charged for using a computer system to intimidate an Orange Walk Kenyo and was released on bail. But on a Facebook Live post last night, Budna says he was unjustly detained by the GI3. Got released today just before a, I think sometime between two and three. And thanks to the president of the movement, the defender, who was there for me and also a other friends and, and family members. I traveled from Belmopan, from Cayo, from Benke to Cayo, a Cayo to Belmopan, uh, Belmopan to Belize City and Belize City, I eat a barbecue, I ate a barbecue, and thereafter the GI3 arrested me and said, we need you at a station because they want you for cyberbullying. I tell him, I just come from the office from cyberbullying, and then give me a number, then got everything, see the inspector number, yeah, no call, and I have been calling the inspector first, he used to answer and he does not answer now. They give me water. Uh, they did not allow me to bathe or anything. Uh, that is in Queen Street Police Station, not Rafoon, Queen Street Police Station. From Queen Street Police Station, I was taken then to Orange Walk by Cybercrime Unit the following day. And when they came for me, they told me, oh, well, they investigate the thing about the um, cyberbullying. Right? Then they changed suddenly and said that for. Um, uh, that not for Ramon Cervantes because he no give no official statement and we need to save that true order fast. But with the first I thought it was for the Champion Ridge man, but it was not the Champion Ridge man neither. All of a sudden everything changed when I did an orange walk last minute when the 48 hours were up. They charged me and they said that for some you some Urbina, they charged me for what well, is the charge that I had read. I can read that charge. Right, I won't say nothing to that man at this point of time. It's before the court, and my attorney know what to do. Budna says he will write a letter to the leader of the opposition saying that his rights to freedom of expression are being infringed upon. Good luck with that. A shooting in the Baisley layout of Carazol Town yesterday morning has left a resident shaken up after he was shot by an unknown gunman hiding in his yard. 32-year-old Giovanni Young was changing his vehicle tire in his yard in the company of 30-year-old Ramiro Pinedo when he heard a loud bang and noticed someone dressed in full black wearing a blue ski mask hiding in some bushes next to his yard. The person then pointed what appeared to be a 9mm pistol towards him and fired a second shot in his direction. Fearing for his life, Young ran out to the street side, and that's when the armed individual began to pursue him. Young continued to run for another 200 yards until he shook off his assailant. No one was injured, and police are collecting surveillance footage from the area. Last month, we told you about a major decision handed down by the High Court, which could end up costing the government many millions of dollars in damages. It has to do with a large land transfer of four parcels of land finalized by the last government in August of 2020. But when the new government was elected, it canceled the transfer, deeming it as suspicious. The just on the 2,000 acres of land in the Duck Run area was purchased from the government by a company named Fowler Works Enterprises for just under $300,000. Not liking the smell of it, the new government refused to transfer the four parcels to Fowler Works even though their purchase price had been paid. One of the issues was that according to the Finance and Audit Reform Act, such a large transfer of national lands exceeding 500 acres must go to the National Assembly for approval and it had not. But while the then government violated the FARA, there's no penalty in the law for such a violation. 
Yesterday, we asked the current lands minister if the law has to be modified to institute such a penalty. Ultimately, the then government, uh, of which I was a part, felt that we had put something in the Finance and Audit Reform Act that was strong enough to withstand the test of time. And then, you know what, how many years later, almost 20 years later, um, a Supreme Court justice says, no, yes, you did put into the law that you need to get National Assembly approval for um, before you can sell or issue 500 acres of land and you need to have an uh, environmental impact assessment, but because you did not have any um, penalties in the law to, to give teeth to that, to, to give flesh to the word, then that's not good enough. Um, so yes, government is going to have to look closely at all of these laws and, and make amendments accordingly going forward. And that's all we have for you tonight. Thanks for watching with your news. I'm Andrew Craig. Remember, you can find a full transcript of the news at 7newsbelize.com and see the streaming video on our Facebook or YouTube pages. Have a great night and join me back here tomorrow at 6.